Star Wars movie? I'd I'd like, I want to see that. I want to see that movie. Uh, that's a crossover for you. <laughs> uh, right. Um, Brian Singer, uh, we, we found out a few weeks ago that the after Days of Future Past, the next X-Men movie is going to be Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse. Yeah. Um, and while we still don't really know anything about the movie, except that it will be released on the 27th of May 2016, Brian Singer has tweeted that he is working um, with Days of Future Past screenwriter Simon Kinberg, X-Men 2... X Men United screenwriters Mike Doherty and Dan Harris. This marks uh-huh. the first time since X Two that Doherty and Harris have worked on an X Men film. Although it remains to be seen who will officially write the screenplay for X Men Apocalypse. Um, it's pretty exciting to see the former franchise writers back in the series. Interestingly, in the tweet, Singer wrote, "It's snowing in Egypt because at, at Christmas time it did actually snow in Egypt for the first time in like 110 years or something." Um, and it still didn't snow here. And Honestly, didn't what's the excuse? Yeah. Um, and while it may not be related, um, our, our guys picked up on FTN uh, that Egypt was in fact the place where Apocalypse was was born, so to speak, in the comics created by Louis and Walter Simonson. Uh, Apocalypse made its debut in X Factor number six. The character's most popular storyline was the Age of Apocalypse and ran in the X Men books at the beginning of 1995 and was set in a parallel reality formed by interference to the timeline. The Age of Apocalypse saw Professor Charles Xavier murdered before he could form the X Men. Instead, a very different take on the team began with Magneto leading them through a post-apocalyptic America ruled by mutants. See, this would tie into the Days of Future Past thing. Yes, it would. You know, so this this might be a clever... And I know all of it, but that's not, the, that's not how it happened. The Kitty Pride went back, not Wolverine. You know what? It's a whole different universe. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's, right. it's, it's not... Like, you're not going in to see Days of Future Past, the 1982 comic. Yeah. You're going in to see based on a movie based on Days on of Future ideas. Past. Yeah, of course. Um, so, yeah, so... That's, that's, the, that's the thing that really annoys me too whenever people are like, oh, but that's not exactly what happened in the comic. Well, you know what happened in the comic. Exactly. If you go in to see a movie called Days of Future Past and it's line by line, scene by scene, panel by panel, what you read in the comics, how bored out of your mind would you be? You know what? This happened to me with The Walking Dead. When The Walking Dead was sticking closely to the comics, mm. I was a bit disassociated with it. Yeah. It was like, I know. Like, yeah, I know exactly here. what's going to happen. I know which character's going to die. I know what this is going to happen here. And then when, they, when they, they vied away from what was happening in the comics, there was that moment of resistance where I was like, no, 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 that's not what happened. And now yeah. I'm like, this is great. They're completely going their own direction. Nobody's safe. It's, it's perfect. So, yeah, it's the exact same thing with these movies. Why would you want to go and see a frame for frame? version of what you already know yeah because it's practically a remake yeah. and we don't have enough of those already <laughs> yeah um so rogue has been cut from days of, oh, what i was going to say was x-men 2 yeah is probably what a movie. the best x-men movie yeah and it's great to get the writers from that movie back yeah. again so this is exciting yeah um i really really hope days of future past can can knock it out of the park um anna packwing's character rogue will not be in days of future past brian singer has confirmed with entertainment weekly that her only scene in the film has ended up in the cutting room floor um he said through the editing process the sequence became uh, extraneous it's a really good sequence and will probably end up on the dvd so people can see it but like so many things in the editing process it was an embarrassment of riches and it was just one of the things that had to go unfortunately it was the one and only scene that anna packwing was in the rogue character was in it even though she's in the materials and part of the process of making the film she won't appear here in it um, he says she did a fantastic job she was awesome she's a brilliant actress I would work with her in a heartbeat uh, she completely understood it's very disappointing but she's very professional she knows that her stuff that this stuff happens particularly with material when you shoot early on in production uh, films do evolve um, but apparently it will pop up on the DVD uh, so the scene will be out there for fans to enjoy yeah, uh, Rogue sucks anyway okay in the right. first two movies she was good and then the third one, she was just whiny and miserable. And then, obviously, spoilers, she got cured at the end. Mm-hmm. So she wasn't even going to be a mutant anyway. Yeah. And obviously, if she's only in one scene, her character wasn't really that big of a deal Aye. Uh, so, overall in the movie. Wow, you're just full of... This is following the name, Mark. I'm Saxon. I'm Colin Baker, and I am following the nerve. So you should follow it, too. Hello, I'm Sylvester McCoy, and I'm following the nerd. This is Paul McGann, Doctor Who number eight, and I'm following the nerd. Hello, this is John Leeson. But he doesn't sound like that. (laughs) The voice of K-9, and I am following the nerd. This is the nerd you're looking for. 
with a certain body part that will remain nameless. Okay, <laughs> easy. Right, um, right. we're talking about movie news. Felicity Jones talks about her costume for Amazing Spider-Man 2. How excited are we for Amazing Spider-Man 2? I'm very excited for Felicity Jones, thank you very much. Easy. Easy, easy. careful easy. night, careful easy. night, careful uh, night. Fans seem to think that Felicity Jones is playing Black Cat or Menace in Mark Webb's Amazing Spider-Man 2. She yeah, well, kind of, sorry, are, go ahead. are they just getting confused because uh, Black Cat's alter ego is Felicity... Something mm. other, isn't it? We yeah, it's uh, Felicia Hardy. Felicia Hardy, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a wee bit more to it than this. Um, right. She kind of almost confirmed that she was Black Cat before. Right. Uh, in July, in an interview with The View, London Jones admitted that her role in the film was shrouded in secrecy, but she may have let it slip a potential spoiler about the movie anyway. I'm Goblin's girlfriend, she said, in a relationship with him, and as a, I'm his accomplice. I'm on the dark side. She backpaddled a wee bit on the Felicia Hardy Black Cat stuff and asked about her character's name. Oh, it's all in the vaults of Marvel, she said. I love it all. That secrecy, I think it's great. It builds anticipation. There's just way too much transparency in everything these days, except her costume. When yeah. asked, hey, <laughs> hey. Um, Steady night. When asked if she had any input in her costume, she said, oh yeah, totally, absolutely. It's a medium that's very collaborative. Actors and directors work on things together. That's how I like to work anyway. So the size of her costume, a medium? I, I don't like, uh, I don't like to be told what to do. I want to share with, uh, a it with someone and work it out together you know that person better than anyone that's my job now they asked her about her costume not her outfit or her wardrobe so did she just confirm that she will be wearing a costume uh, the film opens of course on the 18th of April next year um, and but we get it in March no we get it in April the states get it in May oh no do we not get it oh no it's Captain America I'm thinking of yeah. Uh, and the third film then will be set for release on the 10th of June 2016 the fourth in the franchise may follow on May 4th 2018 uh, in other Spider-Man news Sony's Amazing Spider-Man 2 Daily Bugle site on Tumblr revealed that Spidey has tangled with a not so ordinary bank robber who has created wrist gauntlets that are capable of emitting a vibratory wave of pressure Plus, right. he also got a teaser uh, for the Sin Eater appearance. The article, which was penned by Ned Leeds, who is himself the Hobgoblin in the comics, reads uh, as follows. A shocking mid-time bank robbery was foiled yesterday. Now, this is what this is. is kind of a website that runs alongside to keep you going, basically, before the movie comes out. Yeah, um, it's basically the Amazing Spider-Man's equivalent of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Uh, it's a prequel. Yeah. <laughs> Um, a shocking mid-time bank robbery was foiled yesterday by Spider-Man New York's superhuman vigilante caught the mechanically augmented robber suspected in two previous bank heists as he fled the scene with stolen loot police arrived on the scene as Spider-Man finished webbing up the suspect who was arrested and later identified as disgruntled engineer Herman Schultz Schultz revealed or created wrist gauntlets that are capable of emitting a vibrating wave of pressure that proved capable of tearing apart a four foot th- uh, thick steel vault <laughs> <laughs> NYPD Special Crimes Unit Detective Stan Carter stated that Schultz had officially been remanded uh, in custody and was being held <clears throat> at Ravencroft Institute pending his preliminary hearing. When asked about the disgruntled engineer uh, could create such a dangerous weapon, Carter said, shocking, right? All that genius, but no escape plan. Shocker is a dynamic and terrific character in Spider-Man. In Spider-Man. Plus, uh, there's an Easter egg here that mentions Stan Carter. Stan Carter is an NYPD officer who took up the role of a violent vigilante called Sin Eater after his partner was killed. Um, the public revelation of the identity of the Sin Eater as Stanley Carter by Peter Parker was responsible for the ruin of Eddie Brock's career. Brock... Then, who had published a series of articles, this is on the comics of course, on the Sin Eater in the Daily Globe, based on interviews with another man who claimed to be the Sin Eater, Mr. Uh, called Emil. This led to Brock's hatred of Peter Parker and eventually led him to join up with an alien symbiote and become Dumb Venom. Venom. Yes. So this actually does kind of tie in, you know, because there has been hints of Venom. Yes. Um, and with the whole Sinister Six thing, Shocker is part of the Sinister Six as well. Whether or not we actually physically see these characters in the movies is another thing. Probably not. Mm, no. De- I'd, I'd say definitely not, because I think we're we're villained up for The Amazing Spider-Man 2 for now. I think we are. So, yeah. And, of course, Shocker was very similar to Electro. Yes. As well, so I don't think we'll be seeing him maybe in, the, in Spider-Man sequels either. Well, the only thing is that we know now that they exist in that universe. Yeah. Even if we don't necessarily see them in the movies, which is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, f- some more quick Marvel news. Nothing we didn't know. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn tweeted a picture of Vin Diesel with the statue of Groot with the note, Vin Diesel is a super awesome dude. I can't tell you how much I like this guy. Then shortly afterwards, Marvel released a press statement saying, Vin Diesel is Groot. We get it. We know. We knew this. We know he's Groot. How do we not know? How does this oh, Come not... on, Marvel. Right, okay. So they've made it, Stay they've made on it official. Stay on the ball here. Um, 
Right, so let's just race through I some of the, some other news quickly before we, 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 we have to get things moving here. Yeah, please, um, let's, let's do that. Governor it. has set up... Uh, spoilers, I'm sorry, I know you're not really following Walking Dead. Oh, yeah, I don't know what happened. Okay, the governor, um, actor David Morrissey, uh, has not only made a return as the governor once already, but, uh, but he got impaled through the chest via Cantana, courtesy of Michonne, in the mid-season finale of the last of, of, of Walking Dead season four. Um, it would seem unlikely that we will see him again. Uh, although we don't actually see him get shot, the chest wound and the sheer amount of walkers has to mean that he's gone. Yeah. Not necessarily according to David Marcy. No. Who's been talking to the P- the PA, the Press Association. He says, you know, I feel like a shady politician where I can't confirm or deny anything. Certainly bad things befell him at the end of that episode, but we just have to wait and see. I think they're going to do uh, uh, Merle Dixon. Where he comes back yeah. l- later, much, much later. Yeah. Maybe. Because, like, in The Walking Dead, you see if you aren't shown being torn apart limb by limb. Yeah, you're coming back. You're coming back. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, Fast and Furious 7 gets released yet. Yes, 2015, Yay! isn't it? 2015. Um, following the tragic death of Paul Walker, it was no surprise that Universal halted production of the next installment of the Fast and Furious. Director James Wan had said that it was going to continue, and now Vin Diesel has uh, released the first bit of information. He tweeted a picture, uh, or sorry, he put on Facebook. Diesel is a madman on Facebook. Yeah. He's crazy on Facebook. Yeah, he loves it more than Twitter. He does. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> Steady. He shared, a, he shared a photograph of himself and Walker. The last scene we filmed together, he said, had a unique sense of completion of pride that we shared. In the film, we are now completing. The magic was captured and, and just how far we've come. Fast and Furious 7 will be released on April 10th, 2015. P.S. He'd want you all to know first. Um, we well, at FTM nice. would like to think that Paul would have wanted the movies to continue well, you know of course what? he would have of course he would and this is good this is good news uh, I've become such a huge fan of the Fast and Furious movies it's, it's disgusting actually <laughs> yeah. I, I think about it I need a shower it's, right it's not even it's not even healthy yeah um, no because right okay is that because Gal Gadot's in it <laughs> uh, anyway <laughs> moving on um, but yeah this, I, I you know it's very sad that Paul Walker's dead but I think he would want this to continue and I think the fans want it and I think this is a good thing of course he would uh, first Star Wars news woohoo for Star Wars news in ages as well. Uh, what better way to start the new year than with Star Wars Episode 7 rumours, news, whatever. Recently we heard that the script for Episode 7 is expected to be done soon and for a few months now we've been hearing that the film will begin in spring of 2014. So now it seems that we may actually have an exact date for filming. April 22nd this year. Rumour comes from a tweet by Ali Arakan, who's Roger, who's one of Roger Ebert's correspondents. He wrote, Latest rumour is Star Wars will film in, on April, start filming on April 22nd. Word was shooting would begin in May. That's the first exact date that we've got around. This is pretty cool. Um, yeah. So, yay! Finally, it's April 22nd. Happening. We can have little Star Wars parties. <laughs> and say, like, today, somewhere in the bowels of London itself, a camera started rolling, J.J. Abrams started action, actors started acting, and that will be in episode seven. Yeah. Well, I'll do that. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll do that anytime. I'll be but. with you in spirit. Um, right. So, yeah, so this is great. So, yeah, Star Wars to film. Whatever happens is going to be filmed in the next couple of months. That's pretty exciting. That's class. You saw the Inquisitor figure? Uh, I did. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, I think it looks good, especially for a three and three quarter inch figure. Mm. Yeah, the Inquisitor, of course, is, is, is the, the bad guy from Star Wars Rebels. Yeah. Star Wars Rebels. Uh, yeah, did you see the Lego post? I posted this. Uh, our friends over at Star Wars uh, Underworld got pictures of, of the Star Wars Lego Rebels. Set. Oh, did they? Yeah. Um, so we've I haven't seen those. that. Yeah, so they look pretty cool. Um, there's a there's an adult walker. Have we got main characters or little Lego minifigures no, of the characters no, yet? it's just the ship. The ghost, is that what you call it? The yes, ship? The yeah. ghost. Uh, we've seen that. There's another ship called the Phantom and there's a ship called the Jedi Hunter. Which we're kind of guessing nice. is that's the Inquisitor ship. ship, yeah. Um, there's also a cantina, uh, what looks like a Tatooine cantina, cool, uh, and an Adat Walker, even better, yeah. Which, so, which obviously means that they are going to be going back Hoth, to the original yeah. trilogy stuff, uh, which is great, yeah. Because it is, it's set between three and four, and I've said this yeah. so many times, there's so much gold that can be mined from that gap between three and four, yeah. No, definitely. So, uh, this is pretty exciting news, okay, right. Um and we're coming right yeah. back with our big review. Do, do you know what? Genuinely, what I'd love to see, especially if there's Adat Walkers, like, do you know the way episode five just starts off and we're at Hoth, we're, mm-hmm. we're there, and you, know, you have these big ice tunnels carved out with these wires going around them yeah. and stuff. Who built that? Was it the crew of the ghost? All right. You know what I mean? Okay. It'd be nice to go back and, and see like little bits of backstory and all on what we see in the, in the original trilogy. Sort of have them like in the Bourne movies where it kind of waves in and out of events that have already happened. Yeah. That kind of... Yeah, yeah, I okay. think that would be pretty cool. I like that. That's a good idea. 
Uh, yeah, well, I would imagine we're going to see that. If it's going to be mm. set in that period, we are going to have the same ships, and you know, there has been rumors that Han Solo is going to be in it, that we might see the Millennium Falcon in it, that, you know. Yeah. So if that all, all that stuff's going to be in it, then we could see all that. That'd be pretty cool. Hey there, this is James Arnold Taylor, voice of Obi Wan Kenobi. Johnny Test, awesome. Yeah, but damn, I do. Fred Flintstone, Leonardo the Ninja Turtle, Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank, and I am following the nerd.